welcome everybody some of y'all know me my name's Heidi uh, I've gotten phone calls the last three weeks from people asking about tonight if you're one of those people raise your hand <gasps> so cool all right so now you know who I am that is wonderful uh, welcome welcome we are so happy that you're here tonight um, I'm going to give a personal testimony okay um, my husband was disabled back in 2006 and I mean disabled like he couldn't sit down he could only stand and lay down he was in so much pain he would just put the pillow over his head and scream um, one morning I went out into the kitchen and he was beating his head against the kitchen cabinets because the pain was so so off the charts the doctors had given him every kind of pain medication you can imagine and it barely dulled it I mean just took the edge off and then of course he had all the side effects that go with those medications I mean he was like suffering ridiculously um, this went on for about two and a half years enter Joan I was watching something on TV and here Joan Hunter I'm like man I've I've heard of Charles and Francis Hunter. How many of you have heard of Charles and Francis Hunter? Oh, yeah, okay. And so I said, her daughter, cool. So they taped her a few times down there in Florida during this outpouring in 2008. And that's how I would get Joe out of bed. Joe, Joan's on television. Come on and watch this. Come on and watch this. And he would, he'd fight coming out. And I mean, he was, he, he, his, his faith was like on the floor. He had none. I mean, he was probably in the negative realm at that point. And um, so we watched Joan that whole month of August down there in Florida, all the reruns, because they would show it over and over and over again. And um, come September, it was Labor Day weekend, and Joe was the worst I'd seen him. I thought, I've got nothing to lose. I'm going to email this woman. What have I got to lose? And I two short paragraphs you know if you could pray for for us pray for Joe we would be so 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 appreciative if you could call that'd be great but your prayer means more to us than anything and I stuck my telephone number down there and uh, not thinking that the phone was gonna ring in less than four hours with her at the end of the phone and I, she said, this is, and I already knew who it was because I'd heard her voice for the last month every day, almost on television. And um, so Jones talked to Joe for like an hour on the phone, prayed for him. And she was just like, what, you're not healed? He goes, no. Well, let's pray again. So she just you prayed for him one more time. How's that feel? Nothing happened. Now she was really stumped at that point. And the Lord told her at that point that you're going to walk this one through. That doesn't happen very often to her. Like, probably counted on one hand, huh? And over the next few months, she directed us to a church to go to. She would encourage us and pray with us. I know Kelly and, and uh, prayed, her husband prayed with, they prayed together every night for Joe. Kelly's like, Joe who? This Joe I talked to. And they were faithful in that, and it was wonderful. Um, it, Joe did not get a miraculous healing. That's instantaneous. That didn't happen. What he did get was a progressive healing. It was, it came over like 10, 11 months. The doctors had given up on him. He'd had six surgeries on his back. They said it would never get better. He would only get worse and the pain would only intensify. Oh, thank you for that cheerful news. So I just cut all that mess off, said I'm not receiving that. We walked out and we never looked back. And, uh, and, and thank goodness that there was someone like Joan who was available to minister and speak the truth of God's word. Uh, you're go you already know there's some churches that, well, you know, God's sovereign. He'll kind of heal those that he wants to. And, he, and you know, just kind of, and they hem and haw. And we had one pastor said, well, I don't believe you're going to get healed unless he tells me to pray for you that you will get healed. We just looked at him and we were just like flabbergasted but anyway um, I just so happy you're all here 
Joan, would you please, would you greet her and give her a warm welcome, everybody, as she comes? Love you, love you, love you. Thank you very much. And you can be seated. Hopefully I'm on. There we go. Hallelujah. I love all these interesting new pulpits, so I'm assuming this is a normal pulpit because it's the closest thing I could find to something to hold my books. So I'm excited about being here, and, and um, I used to get all the prayer emails, prayer at joanhunter.org, but I don't get those anymore because we average about 150 a day. And I know that you're familiar with Sid Roth, and he does not do ministering. They'll, their staff will maybe do a, a quick prayer if you need more. He says, go call Joan Hunter. The whole office, the, the whole Sid Roth organization tells people to call there. So I am going there on Thursday. I know he will have a row of employees that need prayer. So that's what I do when I come, and they're so set free, which is awesome. And, uh, but this was, uh, I don't even know how many years ago, four years ago, five, six? Okay, wow, eight years ago, okay? And, uh, and I called, the first time I called, I could hear him screaming, but she was in the front room, and he was way around the house. And, and if you don't, and you think, oh, why, why was he screaming? It's the only way that you can get release. Sometimes you want to go outside and just scream, do it. It's one of the most healthiest things that you can do for your body. It will relieve stress. You know, it's not just, oh, go outside and scream. No, it, it's actually built in you to go outside and release the stress, okay? And the same thing goes, it helps eliminate some of the pain if you, if you scream. Now, I recommend not doing that in church. Outside is great. You know, at home, if you're alone, yes. But otherwise, you know, you need to uh, just be really careful, like not do it at your job. But, uh, but, you know, why are you screaming? Well, Joan said to. Joan who? You know, don't say my last name. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, I'm excited about being back up here. And I, I called him and I said, I'm going to be up there. I'm uh, Thursday, Sid Roth is kicking off his first live television program. And he wanted me to be on there. I am so honored. I can't believe it. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. I have tremendous favor. In the morning on Thursday, I'll be recording my 10th program. He's the only one that's been on more than me. Isn't that fun? And uh, I also have done 10 half hours of healing training for his school, The Supernatural. Out of all the people in the world that do healing, he chose me. That's favor. You know, and favor is undeserved favor, you know, and, and I know he loved my mom, but, you know, if I wasn't half decent, he wouldn't have me on either. <laughs> so uh, they wanted me, it was, I, cause I was talking to them today, and I said, who other people are going to be recording? And they said, nobody. I'm like, just me? And they said, yeah, we want you on the live program, and we couldn't not do a program with you. I said, thanks. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> and... Uh, so, I'm, uh, so I called Joe and Heidi and I said, I'm going to be here in town, see if you can, you know, either rent a building or, or the church would allow us to have some meetings here uh, Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. So we're here tonight and again at 10 o'clock in the morning. And I will be training and equipping in a greater way in the morning. In addition to that, uh, praying for pretty much everybody who comes here. So, um, in there, you know, if you didn't get healed... I mean, when you get healed tonight, you can come back, but you don't necessarily need prayer tomorrow. So I want to make sure that every family uh, got one of these. If you did not, please raise your hand. Just want to make sure. Okay, we got a couple. And, okay. I guess the greeters were, are outside getting other people. So we've got plenty of these. So I'll just quickly, I'm going to go over this in just a second. But on the inside is a piece of paper. It looks like this. If you'll take a moment, fill it out. Let us know how you heard about it. And then on the back here, bullet point list the things that you personally need to be healed of. This is your night. It's not selfish. It's your night. Okay? And, you know, and the different things is like, well, maybe it's not God's will to heal you. Um, there is no scripture like that, by the way. I think that's more of a cop-out than anything. 
And, uh, but once again, bullet point list of things that you need to be healed of. If you have family members that are here, you can add them. If they're not here, then you're going to learn how to pray for them. But I want you to do it. No, you don't. How cool is that to go and pray for somebody and their neck gets healed and their, their back gets healed. They get free of fibromyalgia. I mean, you know, I've got awesome testimonies, but I want you to have testimonies too. Okay, I don't want to just have all the fun. Okay? So, um, but anyway, we're, and, and then take a moment and fill that out um, as we progress over the next, you know, 30 minutes or so. And then hold on to them until you hand them in to a person who is praying for you. And uh, this right here is a little brochure. On the inside, it tells you a little bit about uh, the ministry. We offer a healing school, which is seven books, 11 hours of teaching on DVD. Normal retail is 300, but we've been able to whittle it down to basically our cost of $110. And that is 45 years of experience in the healing ministry. So you're getting a, a, you know, a bargain to say the least. You think, well, that's a lot of money. I agree it's a lot of money, but you know what? You never, you know, two or three copays, you paid for it. Not to mention pain, <laughs> priceless. You know, if you get sick or whatever. And in regards to Joe, I had somebody healed supernaturally, miraculously, um, a, a few months after I had been praying for Joe. And, uh, and she says, it's like writing down a slide on a razor blade. And so I told that to Joe and Heidi, and Joe says that's exactly the best way to describe the pain. That's how intense it was. And for those of you that go to this church to see Joe walking in pain-free, it's a miracle. It's a true miracle. And, uh, and if you need a miracle tonight, you're in the right place. Amen? And then over here, there's some of my books, some of my CDs, DVDs, etc. And then uh, we've got T-shirts that say, Miracles Happen, Need Prayer, Ask Me. And then on the back here, there's scriptures. Now, um, I'm, this, I'm not a doom and gloom preacher at all, because if anything's going to happen to us, I believe I will be in the ark, that God will put some form of protection around me. And the word says, no matter what's going on in the world, the word says that my God's going to supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Then in addition to that, that my, it says that as you take delight in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. Desires of your heart is not broke and homeless. Okay? So, and, and, and like I said, I am not a doom and gloom preacher. In Cuba... Uh, I don't know, 40, 50 years ago, something like that, there was a, uh, they came in and took, confiscated all of the Christian books, Bibles, everything that had any scripture on it. There was a man down there, and they didn't catch all of his books. There was only one remaining, and that was How to Heal the Sick by my mom and dad. And he held on to that, and that was, the, that was the closest thing that he had to a Bible. It has scriptures in it, but obviously it doesn't take the place of a Bible. And he would hold it whenever he needed healing and prayer, and, and he would just hold it and feel the anointing in the book. And as soon as the post office, so to speak, got opened up, he sent a letter to my mom which, uh, and dad, which were by then gone, and because this was like two years ago. And he says, your book kept kept me alive he said when I needed to hear from the Lord I would open it up and I would read God would give me peace and and I thought that was pretty cool so long story short I've got like 10 books in Spanish so I sent them all a whole bunch of my books in Spanish because we can get mail in and out of Cuba now praise God but what what I in regards to that situation if somebody came in took all of your Christian books your Bible your phones your computers because I have my phone in my phone, I have my Bible. In my iPad, I have my Bible. And, of course, on the computer, I have my Bible. And so everything would be taken that has the Word of God in it. Do you have enough Word in here to sustain you? You know, there's, there's a scripture, uh, like when you're under some kind of attack and something about a weapon, God, you know what it is, so protect me. You know, that's not going to cut it. I know the scripture, by the way. <laughs> it's like, you better. And... Uh, but it says, no weapon being formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you, you have the power to condemn. 
Well, in the word it says, and that's Isaiah 54, 17, in verse 15 and 16, it's because of your righteousness that the weapons that are being formed against you, they cannot penetrate you or prosper you, you know, penetrate or destroy you. So you need to understand that as you hold up the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, not the breastplate of grace, I'm all for God's amazing grace. Grace is the, is the blessings of God to keep you from sinning, not permission to keep sinning. Some people have kind of gotten that mixed up a little bit. Okay, but it's a breastplate of righteousness that will protect you from the fiery darts of the enemy. Too many Christians get saved. They have the helmet of salvation and they're running around naked. Okay, and not protected. They don't have their word in them. And if, you know, you get fiery darts of the enemy and you're running around ba basically spiritually naked, you're, you're going to get shot at and you're going to get killed. And too many people get saved and then they start going out and, you know, the enemy does want to keep them from doing anything, and, but they're not grounded in the word. And so it's very important that as we lead somebody to the Lord that we ground them in the, in the word. I have a book out there called Life, and it goes into prisons. And uh, it's in Eng I have an English with me, but it's in English and Spanish. We just sent another 160 to a prison today uh, that will be dispersed amongst the inmates. And I believe, I'm not mistaken, this is a women's prison uh, in Wisconsin. And it's like five years of Sunday school. You know, you give somebody a Bible. I'm not against, so don't misunderstand me. I'm not against giving somebody to get saved a Bible. Tell them to read the Bible. They're going to start at Genesis. They'll be done by chapter 6. Okay? This book teaches you how to read the Bible. And don't start in Genesis. Start in John. Learn about the love of God. And uh, it teaches you all kinds of the depth and the actual meaning of salvation and your Christian walk and things like that. How to develop your faith. It's just very, very elementary, but very foundational people coming in from different churches and so forth. But the word says, thy word have I hid in my heart, that I've hid in my heart, which means I've memorized it. But thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And see, I can, I hate to use the word rattle, but I can rattle or quote these scriptures out to you because they're hid in my heart, you know. And sometimes we need to really claim some of these scriptures no matter where we are. This is just a few that I highly recommend that you memorize. There's a lot, there's thousands, obviously thousands more, but these are just some of the highlights. And uh, it also, uh, like in regards to um, whatever your need is, to pray it, pray the scripture, prophesy the scripture. You know that my God is going to supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Some of you need to hear that even tonight. But you point to the mirror and prophesy it over yourself. It's amazing what will happen. And, uh, but it's also scriptures to give by. Revelation that God gave me, I've got it in my book, Supernatural Provision, that if you're believing God for a witty invention, uh, and that is Proverbs 8.12 to give in an offering of $8.12, $81.20, something that has to do with the numbers. If you're believing for financial breakthrough, Deuteronomy 111, a lot of people give $111 and experience supernatural breakthrough. This is a revelation that God has given me, and it makes giving fun. And, uh, but the, once again, the word says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. That's the main purpose of the word. And I encourage you to get the word on the inside of you. Um, I'm going to share a couple of miracles. And uh, don't hold me to two because I've had two. I, I had probably 50 last night. I ministered at a dream center, a local dream center last night uh, in Conroe, Texas. And I uh, just went in and these girls were hurting and bro broken. And I, they le I left healed and whole. Hallelujah. They had fibromyalgia. They had broken hearts. They had, you know, uh, one little boy... Um, he was like nine years old, had never breathed out of his nose in the last seven years. And uh, so I prayed for him, and I said, I said, say, you know, take an inhale and then blow out your nose and say, thank you, Jesus. I call it Holy Ghost therapy. And so he breathed in, and, he, and it took him a while to breathe out because there was a little tiny hole that he could get a little bit of air out. But he kept going. You know, he'd breathe in, and then he'd go, thank you, Jesus. 
And then within 10 minutes of him doing that, he had no sinus problem, no infection, no pain, no obstruction whatsoever, and he was breathing completely normal for the first time in seven years. Amen. And, uh, and several people healed of fibromyalgia, so if you got fibromyalgia, you'll leave tonight without it, which is great. Um, and uh, I love praying for fibromyalgia because it's totally, completely debilitating. Um, several, and I'll just refer to last night because some of these things you'll actually see tonight. And that is that if you've been in a car accident, some kind of an accident, and you've lost your C-curve. Uh, one lady was in a motorcycle accident. She had lost several inches in height because of the trauma. She had busted her head up. It had been three years. God totally healed her headache. Um, her, in, your neck has a natural curve like this. Her, and then sometimes car accident makes it straight. And sometimes if it's really bad, it makes it like this. Well, she left last night. She actually went to her room because they actually live on site. She left with an absolutely perfect C-curve in her neck and several inches taller. Hallelujah. No pain in her neck. No headaches, no nothing. And so many headaches were healed last night. Several people that don't have your C-curve and you think, well, what, is, what really is a C-curve? It's just the natural curve in your neck. And if you, can, if you cannot look up, you know, easily to the ceiling, you probably have a problem in your C-curve. So, and uh, automobile accidents, things like that, whiplash, c that can help that, um, you know, help it be bad. Is there anybody in here that you know you're missing a C-curve? Okay, you come on up. Just her, so come on up. And uh, right now in the beginning, only come up if I point to you. And the reason I'm going to have her come up is I'm going to just do a little demonstration. I'm going to have you stand right over here. And I know that Heidi had a microphone. Okay. And so how long have you, uh, did you have an automobile accident, something like that? Um, evidently, my chiropractor found it uh, about a year ago. Okay. And d did he, are you aware if you've lost any height? I've lost uh, about three inches since I was a teenager. Let me tell you something. Don't shut your eyes. She's going to get taller right in front of you. <laughs> well, how do you know that? I've never prayed for anybody who didn't. If they needed it, you know, if you don't need it, you're not going to get any taller. Okay? So you can blink, but blink fast. Okay? <laughs> so do you have any pain in your neck or anything? Obviously, you've hurt your, your back in some way. It causes migraines, but I don't have any right now. Thank you. Okay, good. And you're not going to have any more. And uh, so you need to get new vertebrae and disc. Okay? And right there is tissue because I know we will need it. And we're going to start off probably with her taking some just in case. Okay, right there. We, Heidi made sure there was lots of boxes of tissue. And I'm not going to be preaching so you'll be crying. Oh, no, you're going to get healed and you're going to go, oh, which is great. Okay, men or women, it's not just women that cry because Jesus cried. Amen. You know, so it's godly to cry for men, right? Okay, so how long ago? That I've had it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I don't know. It was probably 20 years or more, 30 years. Okay. That you've had the migraines, pain in the neck, pain in the back. Migraines started about 20 years ago. Okay. Do you know if you have any form of osteoporosis or arthritis? Uh, no, I don't know that. Okay. So I'm going to pray just in case because it doesn't hurt to pray. Okay. So, Father, and, and don't shut your eyes. I don't want everybody to be going, wow, and you miss it. Okay. And I'm way down here, and you're going, wow, that was pretty cool. You'll definitely feel it, though. Okay? So just relax. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, and open your eyes. Yes. It's, it's a hard habit to break. The word says watch and pray, so I got scriptural backing on this one. <laughs> Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma that she has had in her life. Any kind of trauma that has brought on um, just different situations and stress, I just curse all these stress hormones, command them to be destroyed. I speak endorphins released in this body in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Any form of rejection and abandonment, I command every bit of it to go. Any, f any spirit of fear... I command that to go in Jesus' name. 
fear of the future and fear of certain things happening again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak health and wholeness into this neck, all the way down the spine, C-curve to be restored, and height to be restored. I'm not bending my knees. You are getting this much taller. Yeah. Yeah, they're all seeing it. Yeah. It's incomprehensible. And I'm not done praying because she hasn't gotten three and a half inches back yet. She's probably at two and a half. I just curse any form of osteoporosis, osteoarthritis. I speak new vertebrae and disc in Jesus' name and full height. I'm not lifting her. I can't do that, by the way. Thank you, Jesus. There's more. (laughs) Now I'm shorter than you. No more migraines. No more pain. Perfect C curve. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. A little overwhelming, isn't it? Yes, it is. Isn't that awesome? Thank you, Jesus. That's what we're going to be seeing here tonight and in the morning. Isn't that awesome? Now, if you know somebody, you can have a seat. Thank you. If you know somebody that has a is missing the C curve, you can bring them tomorrow. But you can also go and pray for them. In the name of Jesus, command the C curve to be restored, height to be restored. Thank you, Jesus. And you'll be going, whoa. (laughs) You know, I never get tired of it. I just think it's like so awesome. Somebody in here needs a knee replacement. Like the doctors have recommended a a knee replacement. Who's got pain in your knee? Okay, come on up. And what's wrong with your knee? Just, Just her right now. Just one at a time, yeah. Well, I don't know exactly what's wrong with it, but it's painful. <laughs> Which knee? Left. Okay, how's your right one? Uh, so if I'm be- going down two is okay. <laughs> if I'm going down, we can do both? Okay, sure. good. Here we go. Now, is there anybody in here who has never had trauma? Okay, didn't think so. And uh, we've all had trauma. Um, I don't know if you know David Herzog, but he was at our building. Uh, we just did a, a prophetic conference. Amazing. And he spoke Sunday night, and he was, we were in my office before he went out. And he says, I saw you in a full uniform, uh, like Army, military of some sort. And when you are in the military and you survive a war in leadership, you get a stripe. He said, I saw you in full uniform with all the stripes of the wars that you've won. And the devil says, I ain't messing with her. I'm like, I like that part. I like the latter part, you know. And so, you know, with all, and I don't have any war wounds because God's healed them all. But I've been to hell and back, okay. I didn't stay in hell. Some people choose there. It's, it's, it's hell. I mean, why stay there, you know. And, uh, and so we've all had trauma. And, uh, you know, and, and, you, and I'm going to, I'll give you two little nuggets. One is like, we'll blow you out of your mind. Jesus cursed the fig tree. He cursed the fig tree to the very root. Why did he curse the fig tree? It wasn't producing fruit. In the word, he says it wasn't time for it to produce fruit. So why would he condemn a tree for not being in season? Okay. It wasn't time for it to have fruit. So he didn't curse it because it wasn't bearing fruit, because it wasn't time to bear fruit. He cursed it to the very root because when Adam and Eve sinned, they turned to the fig leaf to cover their sin. And he says, I don't want anything covering up sin but me. Isn't that good? That one was free. Isn't that good? That's all free. (laughs) But the point is, I just thought that was such an incredible revelation. 
I'm not, it's not my original, but it is an amazing revelation because I have cursed the root of the disease because I don't want the disease to come back. I have a book called Power to Heal, which deals with the root causes because too many Christians are magnets to sickness. Okay, I want any kind of magnetism to sickness to go. Okay, and I don't, the, the word says, I've, you know, I've come to heal the sick. Not every month. Okay, he had to come up with healing because sickness and sin came in. And so he had to come up with healing. Divine health was in the plan. But then Adam and Eve sinned and all kinds of stuff happened. So I'm going down. I'm going to curse the very root of what brought the knee problem on. You know, if, if it's an, because sometimes you'll pray for people and they'll feel better, you know, but until the root and the trauma and what's called cellular memory and all of that cellular memory, because it remembers the pain for 20 years. Okay. And even if you got prayer and everything kind of works better, then a lot of times the, the pain is still there because of the power of our cells, which are amazing. Okay, so here we go. You ready? Okay, you're going to run around the church in a minute? Yes, say yes. And Jacob will run with you, not me, because I'll be going on to the next one. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma in these knees, any form of arthritis, bursitis, inflammation, um, wear and tear in Jesus. And I command every bit of it to go, and I speak a nice, healthy padding of cartilage in Jesus' name, all pain to go. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we just speak health and wholeness into the neck, into the back. Open your eyes. And height to be restored in Jesus' name. And God strengthening her back while I'm praying, making it stronger and making her taller too. Amen? Amen. Say thank you, thank Jesus. You. Thank you. Okay, but your knees are good, but your hip is kind of a little finicky right now. No problem. Yes. <laughs> so, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just command that finicky hip to be healed, uh, sciatic nerve to be released, every bit of pain, any form of possible arthritis to go in Jesus' name. Say, thank you, Jesus. Go on, do a little wiggle with me. Good. Wow. Isn't that good? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look how good she's walking. And walking good, wiggling good, and, and that's good. Okay, now it's taken, <coughs> it's taken me longer to explain than pray. But you have to have, you have to have the foundation of, of understanding why I'm praying what I'm praying, you know, and I'd be praying for Joe and, and God says, tell him to call him up, tell him to get rid of the guilt, you know, and I said, I don't even know what the guilt was about. And I call him up and I said, you got guilt and something. And they go, yeah. So I got rid of that got a little better. And then, you know, then I get another revelation in prayer, call him up. How about this? Yep. Okay. Let's pray. Let's get rid of it. Feel a little better. I mean, it was, we were inching along. But we were inching. Hallelujah. And now to have him up and around and walking, yes. And it was like four years after we, after I started praying for him, I actually got to meet him. But God knew him all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, this is kind of an unusual one. Uh, somebody's got pain in their earlobe. Who is that? Okay, you got pain in your earlobe? Okay, come on up here. And, you know, like 90% chance somebody here is going to have a knee problem. No word of knowledge on that one. Okay. Somebody in here is bound to have a shoulder problem. Okay. Earlobe, that's word of knowledge. She's got a few little odds and ends going on. Okay. So what all is going on with your earlobe? You feel like somebody is taking something and beating and it's throbbing. Dust all up in my head. Okay, have you been in a car accident or anything in particular, or it's just life? It's just life or whatever. It's got my top of my head even sore. Okay. And 
feet? Yes. I suffer from epilepsy. Epilepsy? Okay. So you need scarring in your brain. Scarring in the brain. I will pray for prions, P-R-I-O-N-S. Um, you can Google all the little things. Um, uh, you can Google trauma. You can Google cellular memory. You can Google prions. Prions are bad cells eating good cells. That's simple terms. Um, but medically, they, uh, they're, um, they're demonic, according to a celltologist at the person who studies cells. They don't have a nucleus. Yeah. Who controls them? Demons or the devil. I'm sure he's busy. He's got demons that do that. And they're out to destroy you. They also say not to scare you, but they say that every body has prions in them. Mine doesn't because I prayed, and they're killed, gone, sent them home. Amen. You know? So, well, how do you do that? In the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all prions in my body in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. It's not hard. Don't be making all this stuff hard. Okay? I'm oversimplifying it because that's the way it's supposed to be. Jesus came and he healed the sick. Didn't say he prayed for three hours. And the situation with Joe is very unusual. And I'm like, you're not healed? Really? I mean, it's, it's shocking if somebody doesn't get healed. Because you're going to get healed. Because you're dealing with a lot of other things. Are you on medication right now? Yes. Okay, come on up this way. A lot of medication. Okay. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form. Just be real quiet. Just receive right now. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma in this life and in this body in Jesus' name. And I command every bit of it to go in Jesus' name. The stress and what she's carried through the years of the worry of the family and worry about finances and all that kind of stuff that has just literally taken a toll on her body in Jesus' name. Any trauma that her head and brain has experienced, I command all that to go. I curse this epilepsy in Jesus' name. All scarring on the brain to go. Every prion is cursed, command to leave this body, not just in the head. In Jesus' name, any form of addictive medication, we just command that addiction to be broken off in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma to this head, to this neck, height to be restored, blood flow to be proper to the head, any trauma to this head, I command it to go. Any trauma to the ear area, I command that to go in Jesus' name. I speak a new jaw joint, no more TMJ in Jesus' name, more height to be restored, and I speak health and wholeness throughout this entire body. I curse any form of, of oppression and depression. I command it to be gone. I speak health and wholeness. A couple of new hips in Jesus' name. And new knees in Jesus' name. And new feet. All the pain to go in Jesus' name. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Open your eyes. How's your head? It's not hurting like it was. That's awesome. Yes, I can praise God in the house. Isn't that good? So are, is it like fading, gone, or just like... Because see, sometimes the doctor says you have to learn to live with it. And so it's hard for people to really tell when it's gone. They wake up in the morning and go, wow, it's really gone. Okay? So how, how is it feeling? My eyes are clearing. That's awesome. Amen. And the heaviness is lifting. Yeah. Amen. Say, thank you, Jesus. Check out thank your you knees. Jesus. Okay, do a little wiggle. A little one, not a big one. No, just kidding. Yeah, go like this. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, does that hurt? You got trouble with your shoulder? Well, trouble's going. Isn't that good? Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak a brand new rotator cuff in Jesus' name. All pain, all inflammation, all arthritis to go in Jesus' name. Say, thank you, Jesus. Pick it up higher. That hurt. Is that hurting or not? Say, thank you, Jesus. I'm not pushing her hand up, just so that you know that. Okay, you can go a little higher. Okay, down. 
Okay, up again. Thank you, Jesus. Better. Okay, down. Thank you, Jesus. Exercise class. So I got to get mine in somehow. Thank you, Jesus. Getting better. Okay, hold on to my hand, my thumb. Just kind of hold on to it. I don't want to push it up too high, but I, it, it it's not strong enough to go up right now. So how's it feeling? Okay. Thank you. Jesus. Thank you. Jesus. Okay. In the name of Jesus, I command every bit of that pain to go. Cellular memory of the pain to go. Complete mobility throughout her body to be restored in Jesus' name. Amen. Touch my hand. There you go. That's awesome. Isn't that good? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, I'm sensing somewhere fairly recently. Um, I'm not going to, like recently is not a month, but within the last few years, that you have had a lot of money taken from you, withheld from you. And that's, that has stopped officially tonight, and God is in the process of reversing that and restoring it to you. Amen. 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 There you go. Yep, thank you, Jesus. Now, some of you may go, I wish he had spoken that over me. <laughs> Did you hear me? I spoke it over you. Okay? So it's time that we receive this. Okay? And, uh, and there's, there, I was going to pray for somebody else with a, somebody with a shoulder problem, but she had one. Who else like, needs a new rotator cuff or, or shoulder surgery? Who is that? I know there's at least one more person in here. Anybody? Okay, come on up here. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. They are all connected. If you don't believe me, stub your big toe and everything hurts. Okay, so you need a new shoulder? The left one only. Okay, and you need a new knee? The left the one doctor, only. The doctor said two knees. Two knees, okay. Go to Canada, that's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> or some money now. It's it's really gone down lately. How's your hips? They're fine. Okay. To my knowledge. To your knowledge. Okay. And do you have you have pain in your knees, pain in the shoulder, pain in your neck? You're not a pain in the neck, <laughs> right? No, You're just a so. pain in the neck. Yes. Okay. Just want to clarify that we need to pray for here or here. Okay. And, got and it. And numbness in the left toes. Numbness in the left toes. Do you happen to have diabetes? No, I haven't. Okay. Been now, I'm not saying that you do, but that's usually a symptom of diabetes. That's why I'm like, if I'm praying, we might as well get the whole kit and caboodle. Right? Okay. So here we go. So, Father, right now, just relax. Just relax. Eyes open. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all. Shh, just receive. So I may just give you a word of knowledge and prophecy, and you need to, you need to hear the word. So, Father, and keep your eyes open. There you go. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma. Any form of abuse, mental, verbal, emotional, physical, or sexual. I speak health and wholeness into the entire digestive system. In Jesus' name, all trauma that has been brought on to these shoulders that have carried the weight of so much. In the name of Jesus, I just command every bit of shame to leave this body. I'm just sensing a lot of shame. Let me just give you a nice little word. You've been believing a lie. You didn't do it. Just command every bit of that to lift her shoulders. And Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I speak health and wholeness into this neck. You need a little help on the C-curve there. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak a new C-curve, healed and whole. And you get some extra height. It just comes with it. So height restored in Jesus' name. Brand new rotator cuff. Strength of these shoulders because they're both worn out by carrying a bunch of chunk. In Jesus' name. 
And Father, I speak a supernatural double knee replacement, all arthritis, bursitis, every bit of it to go, every bit of pain to go, cartilage restored in Jesus' name, health and wholeness into these hips, any form of oppression, oppression, I command it to be gone, and hopelessness and worthlessness. Command every bit of that to go in Jesus' name. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How's your knees feeling? I haven't prayed for your toes yet, so I'll be right back. <laughs> this one, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just command feeling to be restored into those toes in Jesus' name. Okay, now thank you, Jesus, again. How's your shoulder? How's your neck? How's your spirit? Woohoo! Yeah! How are your knees? Good? Good? Okay. It's okay to do this in church, especially when you're praising the Lord. Okay, toes? There, the numbness is gone. Isn't that awesome? Now, you, you realize you've already seen at least 20 miracles in four people. Okay, because some of you probably, she's, she's down for the count right now on her face before God. <laughs> and what's so cool is that sometimes people will come up here, they'll get healed, and they'll just kind of walk away, oh, praise God. It's like, I just got healed. And the reality of it. Uh, anybody here with fibromyalgia that doesn't want to keep it? Okay, no, here, here. And then you'll learn how to pray for your sister and she'll get free, which is awesome. Anybody here have fibromyalgia? If you see somebody next to you that has their hand up, it's kind of hard to see. I kind of see everybody, but I just want to make sure. Anybody with fibromyalgia? Anybody want to come up here that has fibromyalgia? Anybody not want to come up here when you have fibromyalgia? You think, well, everybody's prayed for me. Why should I try again? Because you're going to get healed. You know, this is an area where God has really anointed me in the area of healing of fibromyalgia. Two healed out of two last night. Not two out of 30. I had two out of two. And that's pretty much where fibromyalgia is concerned. And where you're concerned, where your sister is concerned, where fibromyalgia is, it's brought on by something traumatic. Somebody may have it for 20 years. You go back to 21 and something traumatic happened at 21. Could be a loss of a spouse, loss of a parent, had to move, uh, something to do with a child, uh, divorce, you know, car accident, a variety of things, but something very traumatic. And then the person gets very stressed out oh, in their neck, stressed out in their shoulders. And then at that point, the, this area cannot hold any more stress. So it goes down to the bottom. And then you go to the doctor and, the, and you tell the doctor, that your bottom hurts, he says, or she says, you have fibromyalgia. You know, once it starts in the bottom, is that you? Okay, well, come on up. Let's get free. Fibromyalgia is very debilitating. Many times it's, uh, you really, if you've got a severe case, you can't hug or be hugged because of the pain. To put clothes on is very, very, can be very, very painful. You roll over at night and it wakes you up because of the pain throughout your body. And what's so neat is these that have been healed, they can roll over tonight and they won't wake up. Isn't that good? You know, not because they're dead, but they can roll over because they don't have, you know, won't wake up because of pain, you know? Okay, so I've just pretty much described you, okay? And it affects pretty much every cell in your body. And there's, there's stress balls throughout the body, bottom, uh, hip thigh area those are certain areas where um, it really really does and especially in the back area okay so you ready to get free yes. been through trauma yes yes Correct. and I had a blood clot that I got a still in there now to okay I'm trying to keep from going to the heart of my brain okay yes. so you need a new heart sugar. yes okay and I knew her overhaul <laughs> A new overhaul. <laughs> okay, so like a new heart and get rid of the fibromyalgia, get rid of the stress, the trauma, all kinds of other stuff. Mm -hmm. I had a shot put in it and it 
stop hurting for a while, but it's coming back. Okay, the Still. hurt where? The knee. In the knee. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we're just. Feet swell from sugar, diabetes. Okay, got diabetes. Mm -hmm. Here's another 15 right here. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Okay, that's why we give you those little pieces of paper because some people, like I had one lady come in the other day, she had over 100 on there. She had a little bitty handwriting. She had over 100. And I'm like, you forgot trauma because trauma brought every, probably 99% of that on because the effect of trauma that can have on your body. Just relax, okay? Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma in this life and in this body in Jesus' name. I just command all that trauma to be released in Jesus' name. Any form of rejection and abandonment, I command every bit of it to go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Any form of rejection, abuse, mental, verbal, emotional, physical, or sexual, I command every bit of that trauma to leave this body in Jesus' name. I speak health and wholeness into the entire digestive system in Jesus' name. I curse the fibromyalgia, the spirit of pain, chronic fatigue syndrome in Jesus' name. I command every bit of it to go in Jesus' name. I speak a healed and hold, whole heart that has been broken. Father, I thank you for giving her a brand new heart in Jesus name I speak health and wholeness into your neck all the way down your spine and height to be restored just want to get some of that height back thank you Jesus and father I just thank you for a Holy Ghost double knee replacement in Jesus name I curse this diabetes I speak a new pancreas in Jesus name blood sugar to be restored to normal and this excess swelling in these feet and ankles to go in Jesus' name. Say, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Now check your body for any kind of pain. Here she goes. Yeah, I, I knew she was going. Check your knee. Come on. Get it going here. Check your shoulder. Okay, so thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Loosen that thank up. You, You're getting loose. Thank Hallelujah. Thank you, That's awesome. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Isn't that great? Yes, indeed. Yes. Mm. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> She's sort circling in her hair. That's awesome. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody's got like a, a burning in your stomach that you're just, you, and it's not just like tonight, you've got like a burning in your stomach and a lot of problems with like acid reflux and stuff. Who's got a pain in the stomach? Okay, come on up. All that Holy Ghost therapy, we got people going, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to have you stand over here. And uh, what's going on? Um, oftentimes I have like um, um, acid um, um, reflux in the middle of the night, and it feels like a burning sensation. And sometimes I have to like sit up. I did that on last night or this morning. I had to sit up in bed, and, and I lay back down. I'm going to come back. Okay. Well, a lot of the, just medically, stomach produces, a, you know, there should be a, a normal amount of acid but it can produce too much. In the process of producing too much, then it, what it does is it burns off the bottom of the esophagus, when, and the, what's called the sphincter muscle. And so instead of it closing and keeping everything in the stomach, it's opened up and burned. Then it gets, if it's really, really severe, you'll have a, a hiatal hernia, which in turn is the actual stomach going up into the esophagus, extremely painful. So if you hear of somebody ha having that, you know how painful it is. Don't go, ooh, that must really hurt. Say, no, let's pray. Okay, yes, it does hurt. Okay, and so we're going to pray for a new sphincter muscle. 
All of this is brought on because of stress. Okay, and then mo more than likely something pretty stressful happened yesterday, which really triggered it even more so within the last couple of days. Um, I was um, recently um, diagnosed with uh, rheumatoid um, arthritis. Okay. And also have tears in my knees, so dealing with um, both of that, the pain. Okay, so you, got, you need a couple of knees. Yes, and um, deliver from um, rheumatoid um, arthritis. Okay. Which I'm on, on medications, and doubt it is trying to um, reduce... Um, um, it is a pill, but it's causing me pain and stress. Okay, all of the above. Yes. And then along with rheumatoid arthritis, usually comes a diagnosis with OLD. Okay. I've not heard of that disease. Good. Don't ever learn about it. Because, see, you, you associate rheumatoid arthritis with older people. Okay, now children can get it, but all of that is brought on because of trauma, different things. Okay, so we're going to get rid of all that. And it's like, am I going to, am I going to get crippled? Am I going to end up in a wheelchair? Am I going to, I mean, all that's been going through your mind, which that, in, that the visual of all of that, it can be very stressful in itself. Okay, so we're going to get rid of all of it. I think you might need one of these. So you're ready now. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma in this life, in this body, in Jesus' name. And I command every bit of it to go. The amount of stress that she's been carrying and concern, I command every bit of it to go in Jesus' name. Every bit of it to just literally lift off of her shoulders in Jesus' name. I curse this rheumatoid arthritis. I command it to be gone. Every bit of pain and inflammation in these joints, I command every bit of it to go in Jesus' name. I speak a supernatural double knee replacement, new tendons, muscles, ligaments, and cartilage and to, uh, in, and every bit of pain and discomfort to go in Jesus' name. I speak health and wholeness into this neck all the way down the spine and you're getting taller also you have a thyroid problem okay in jesus name i'm gonna pray anyway it seems a little swollen that was not word of knowledge it just because of years of experience it's a little swollen right here so father right now in the name of jesus i just command all that swelling to go down with a in a brand new thyroid in jesus name I speak health and wholeness into the entire digestive system. I say to the stomach, peace be still, and a brand new sphincter muscle on the bottom, every bit of pain to go. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Check your knees. Thank you, Jesus. No pain. Yeah. Glory to God. Check your shoulders. Check your stomach. There's no pain. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Amen. Thank you. It's almost like, you know, Jesus' last name. You know, it's like, thank you, Jesus. Wow. <laughs> that we know it's not. It's Christ, okay? And uh, then that awesome? There's somebody here that is currently has a migraine. You have, and this is word of knowledge, not just probably somebody in here has one. But there's somebody in here who actually has a migraine. Right here. Okay, come on up. Okay, so, hi. I'll give you one of these just in oh. case. They're, okay. they're free. <laughs> and so, um, how long have you had migraines? About 10, 11 years now. Okay. Maybe more. Anything, something traumatic happened 11, 12, 13 years ago? Uh, stress. Mm hmm. But something triggered the stress. Yeah, but I don't know. <laughs> okay. That was a good answer. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. <laughs> you know? And something triggered it, you know? I mean, it could be even 15 years ago because it's hard to remember exactly when things like this started happening. And, uh, but somewhere or another, it triggered it. So we're going to deal with that trauma that brought on the migraine. So you currently have a migraine? Yes. Okay. It goes from the neck or to my side or my left. It works away. Okay. 
and so it's going to go away, and it's and we're giving it an eviction notice tonight. Isn't that good? Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, it is great. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma in this life and in this body in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Any form of rejection and abandonment and any form of abuse that has weighed heavy on her heart, I command every bit of that to go in Jesus' name. This may sound, I'm not going to say it sounds strange, but God's really impressing me to tell you, he thinks you're really beautiful. And he wants you to think the same. Because he sees the beauty that sometimes you don't see. So, Father, give her a new vision of herself. In Jesus' name. And, Father, right now, I speak health and wholeness into this neck, all the way down the spine, all the blood flow to the head to be normal. I curse the spirit of migraine headaches. I command it to be gone. Every bit of pain, every bit of cellular memory of the pain to go. Any fear of it coming back to go. And the debilitating um, fear of, of the debilitating pain. All that to go in Jesus' name. There you go. Every bit of pain to go in Jesus' name. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's gone, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Yay! No doubt. Okay, I'm not bragging on me. Because I'm not doing the healing. I just have complete faith that God, through Jesus, is going to heal everybody. And sometimes people have a fear of praying for somebody for fear that they won't get healed. Like if you're out in public and so forth. And it's like, man, you know, what if they don't get healed? So you just kind of walk on by. Well, when you think that, you're taking on the responsibility of the healing. According to the word, you're going to lay hands on the sick and see them get well. Isn't that fun? And then there's somebody that's got like a knot on the back of your neck, either a vertebrae out of place, um, but you can actually feel that knot on your back, on your the neck area, upper back neck area. Who is that? Is that you? Okay, come on up. This is so fun to pray for these knots because they go away. And the bone, you know, the, the vertebrae are out of alignment. Uh, so I put my hand on and Your first response is kind of like to say, ooh, because the vertebrae were like this in the neck. The vertebrae and discs, and they were mismatched and everything. But to see and to put your hands on them, and then all of a sudden they just went 100% into alignment. That, I can't describe that. I can kind of show you, but I felt that. And that's stuff I'll never forget. Okay, so what's wrong with your neck? Uh, C4 and C5, okay. and there is that knot there. There's a little bit of um, the cartilage that spur, spur like okay. that, like this is right, spur. And then also down in my back, I have L4 and L5, I think. That okay. Oh, it's a little osteoarthritis. Okay, so we're going to get that little bit of osteoarthritis Thank out you. the door. Oh, praise God. Yes. yes. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma in his life and in his body, in Jesus' name. I command every bit of it to go. I speak health and wholeness into this entire spine. Thank you, Jesus. I command every single vertebrae and disc to line up. Oh, you're growing. Look at that. Didn't even pray for that, and you decided to pop on up there. I curse any and all form of osteoporosis in this body throughout the entire spine. New L4, L5, and C, whatever... One to seven, whatever it happens to be. Might as well get all of them, you know. Okay, in the name of Jesus, I just I curse that bone spur. I command it to be gone. And you're getting even taller again. <laughs> and some more. <laughs> okay, she, she's going home tonight, six foot tall. <laughs> yeah, you walk in the door, husband goes... <laughs> What happened to you? I thought you were just going to church. 
<laughs> so Father, in the name of Jesus, I just command that to go right in the place. That's what he's there for. <laughs> okay. Any pain left in your body? Okay. Okay. The L part's good. Okay. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I command the rest of that pain to go in Jesus' name. So, your memory of the pain to go, the rest of that bone spur to be supernaturally dissolved in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It feels good, doesn't it? It's like, like a, an hour massage on your neck and your back, and it's just like so awesome. Amen. Yes, isn't that great? Hallelujah. Somebody here has got a pain in, in your sciatic nerve. Sciatic nerve can be left side, right side, you know, either one. It, the sciatic nerve is the largest nerve in your body. It's about three quarters of an inch around. And then when it gets pinched, it gets inflamed and it gets very mad and it lets you know. So walking, okay, come on up here. Now it's something very simple to pray. So as I pray for her, if you have that, it's very simple to get rid of it too, okay? Not making fun of her, just making, pointing it out that she's hurting. And she runs around here going, woo, in a minute, okay? And so when you understand, some of these, the people, some of you that have come in tonight, have come in with a lot of pain, but you're leaving without it. Isn't that good? Okay, so mainly on that left side, or you got some pain, or the right side, or um, any pain elsewhere? Okay, and your right hip. Yes. Have you fallen on this side? No. Have you been in a car accident where you were hit on this side? I was in a car accident when I was 12. And, okay. Um, I was in the back of a car and slammed up against a, it was an old station wagon. And I was slammed up against it. And I was Way before seatbelts. Yeah, and I was in a cast from here to here. Okay. And for a while. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and, and that trauma, because a lot of times trauma, car accidents, things like that, they say they come back with vengeance after 25 years. And you know why? Because of the trauma that's in, that has reside, you know, resides in you from the accident. And if you'll notice, I mean, I was in a car accident 25 years ago, and all of a sudden it hurts now. That's why. That's medically proven that it comes back. They don't know why, but it's because of trauma, okay? So, on an overall basis, how is your back? Okay. okay. But it could be better. Yeah. Okay. And especially this whole right this, side. Uh, my right side has always got pain somewhere. Because more than likely, when you came up, you, instead of going straight, you probably hit on this side. And all that, it, your body has remembered that since you were 12. Isn't that amazing? I think our bodies are amazing. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma, especially this trauma from when she was 12 years old. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just command every bit of it to go in Jesus' name, even the hopelessness about never really getting healed. I command all of those thoughts to go in Jesus' name. I command all pain and all trauma from this right side of the body and cellular memory of all of this pain to go all the way down, out, and all the way down, and out. All pain in the, the heel to go, sciatic nerve to be released, every bit of pain to go, and inflammation to go, health and wholeness in this neck, all the way down the spine, Height to be restored, and you're getting taller too. This is a time and a season of restoration. In Jesus' name, every bit of pain gone. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Check out all of her. Isn't that good? Stand clear, Jacob. There she goes. Isn't that awesome? Somebody is in extreme pain. I mean, there's been a lot of people that have been in a lot of pain. But somebody has just got a lot of pain all over. Raise your hand. Just a lot of pain. That's good. That not good that you're in pain. Okay, come on up. And you get to come up and you get to go home and everybody can see your shirt better. Isn't this fun? Seeing all these people heal. Now, I just, while he's coming down here, we'll give him a little bit of time. And Jacob is going to help him a little bit. And um, I want you to understand, not just for me being here to do this. I'm here to tell you, according to the word of God, as called as I am to lay hands on the sick, so are you. With the same results. Now, are all of you called to be in full-time traveling the world healing ministry? No. Everybody is called to your sphere of influence, which means in, in the ministry's mission statement is to equip believers, you, to take the healing power of God beyond the four walls of the church to the four corners of the earth. Does that mean Haiti? Does it mean Japan? Where does it mean? It means your family, where you work, where you shop, and your neighborhood. I believe that God has called each one of us to have a healing room in our home that our neighbors need to know if they need healing, they can come. Okay, so tell me why you have an external bra on. Trauma. <laughs> Trauma. I know that. Car accident? No? Uh, Somebody beat you up? Fall out of trees and... So that's plural. Trauma. Well, a couple times. A couple times? Okay. Mm -hmm. So your spine has disintegrated pretty much? Mm, yeah. Okay, so I you need a new spine. My whole back's been cut open. Okay, Rides so you got scar through. tissue. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so... Both knees have been replaced. Have been replaced. How are they working? Or you need a couple of new ones? Yeah, well, they just put them in that long ago. Do, you, do they still hurt? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you still need a couple of new knees. Mm -hmm. So I can go down and we can work on those, mm -hmm. okay? And a uh, whole new back, scar tissue gone, and pain any place else or primarily in the back? Just all over. Okay, just all over. Off in here, just nerves. Okay, and then you have that just because mm -hmm. of to stabilize you? Mm -hmm. Okay, and it helps you walk, takes a little bit of the pain off, pressure off of somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, how long have you had the brace on? Since February. Okay. Had an operation in February. I've had neck surgery, three back surgeries, knee surgery. And one final one tonight in the spirit. Okay. Amen. A few years ago, I was in a service. And I'm like, what is, what is all of this happening? And I'm like, you know, I'm like, it looks like angels, but it looks like they got hunchbacks. I mean, it was kind of the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And so I had a word of knowledge, somebody over there that needs a new heart. As I speak a new heart in the name of Jesus, and the angel went, foom, and the person went, foom. I'm like, there are body parts in there. <laughs> That's like so cool. So I have healing angels, at least two, that come to services, and their backpacks are full. And if they use all those, they have no problem. They go back and get some, and like, just like that. But see, when you made the decision to come, your, your part was ordered. We're just putting them in, okay? Because the power of God is here. I mean, that's the, you know, that's the simplest way I can describe it, but he's going to get a whole new spine, Amen. right? And go, woo, out of here. Not right away, but, you know, in due season. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just curse any and all form of trauma in this life and in this body in Jesus' name. Trauma from falling out of the trees, trauma from lifting, trauma from working really hard. And all that trauma, I command every bit of it to go. And the wear and tear on this body, I command every bit of it to go in Jesus' name. And Father, anything thinking uh, of, <laughs> I'm not going to get healed, any kind of hopelessness, even though 
you came. That that's really cool for them, but I don't I don't think it can happen to me. Well, I'm here to tell you, that, yes, it can. And it's in the process of getting ready to happen, and you're going to end up with a whole new spine. And there you go. I'll give you two, just in case. And so, um, thank you, Jesus. So, Father, I start off in the name of Jesus with a whole new chest cavity, chest area, new ribs. I command the ribs to go into alignment in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I speak health and wholeness into this neck all the way down the spine height to be restored and I speak a new spine in Jesus name all scar tissue gone all pain gone in Jesus name height to be restored complete mobility to be restored so you get a new spine the, the one deteriorating is, is going is gone and now the new one's coming, so it's just, you're bound to be taller. You can tell you're getting taller. Because I'm not getting shorter. I cut those words off in Jesus' name. <laughs> and Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak a supernatural double knee replacement. Every bit of pain, trauma to the knees to go, and scar tissue to go in Jesus' name. Every bit of scar tissue to leave this back in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Say, thank you, Jesus. Okay, now check your shoulders. Do a little wiggle. What was that? Okay. So I didn't think you winked at me because you thought I was cute. <laughs> you can tell when there's a little bit of pain because these people go, wink at you. I'm like, oh, right there. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just command that catch to go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Say, thank you, Jesus. Better? Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Where, what, what was it mm, for? Stiff. stiff or pain? Stiff. Okay. Stiff, you got to work out. Okay. Where is the pain? Just in my spine. Lower, lower part? Okay. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just speak all new vertebrates down there. In Jesus' name, every bit of pain, scar tissue, cellular memory of the pain, and the trauma of the surgeries... I command every bit of that to go in Jesus' name. Okay, thank you, Jesus, again. Okay. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Keep saying thank you, Jesus. Do a little wiggle, just a little one. Okay, how's that feeling? Okay. If it's sore, you got to work the soreness out. Pain, I'll pray. Okay. Sore. It's just sore. Okay, bend a little bit, just a little. Okay, and, and I want to know pain level. Zero is good, but I'll take whatever I want you to be honest. Okay, and you came in with probably a 10, huh? 10, okay. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Where in your spine, t tell me when to stop my hand in the back, okay, where it hurts the most. Okay, from here down. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for totally removing every bit of pain all the way down. Check it. How's that? Is it like zero yet? That's the... Stiffness, but pain. I'm asking for pain. Pain's still there a little bit. How much? Okay. Just say thank you. A little, little further. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Knees good? Stiff. Because you you've been stuck in a bed or stuck in a chair mm -hmm. and haven't been moving them. So Holy Ghost therapy, you know, from now on, thank you. And if you can go, thank you, Jesus, and you'll eventually get up to doing the thank you, Jesus. You go, thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You might be touching your toes by morning and come give testimony. Okay? Amen? Amen. Isn't that good? If he hadn't, you know, for him to get up the stairs, it's, you know, number one, that's great. Number two, it's not because of pain. He's, his muscles have atrophied, you know, through the years of dealing with the back and, you know, and so forth. And, you know, if you've got like a, a smaller step at home, just kind of goes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And that will strengthen your, your muscles. I got some stairs at the house. You know, and uh, and so I don't normally go upstairs, but sometimes it's just good to go up. It's, you know, there's a little place that you turn and you can go back up. But even to go up and down, up and down, you know, it's, I got my own little treadmill that I just go up and down or do whatever that I need to do there. And uh, and I want to just share something. I'm not done. I'm just kind of doing a little shift here. Um, I just want to share something with you. According to the word of God, and I think everybody in here is pretty much going to follow me in agreement. The word says that he took stripes on his back for our healing. Okay, it's, we're in agreement. These are covenants and promises that according to his word, he promises to heal. Okay, he promises heal. It's, it's our covenant right to be in divine health. Okay, it's not so, like a whim. No, it's in his word. It's a promise for God to heal you. Now, in the name of Jesus. Now, the word says that he died on the cross so that we could live on this earth. If you read the scripture, and I went back and I read it, uh, and it, it's a little bit different. And it's not just, you know, live on this earth. It's have life and life abundant. Okay? On this earth. He died physically, they say, of a broken heart. So we don't have to have a broken heart. And God's healed my heart. Just supernaturally healed my heart. And, uh, and then in addition to that, he's, he's, he's done so much for me. It's just absolutely amazing. But then he rose from the dead, knowing that we will rise with him. He ascended into heaven, knowing that one day we will ascend into heaven with him and spend eternity with him. And all these things are, we're all in agreement. There's another one, and you know the scripture, but not everybody is aware that it's a covenant promise. The word of God says that Jesus became poor so you could be. That's a covenant. And in order to become poor, you have to be rich. Now, this messes with a lot of theology, but Jesus was rich. I'll prove it with scripture in a second. That, well, that was good. Yeah, I heard that. And so, but what happens is... It, you can't become poor without being rich. So he left his money, all of his riches with his mom, and he became poor, sacrificially poor, homeless, so we don't have to be poor or homeless. Jesus wasn't poor as an example how to be poor. You understand the difference? I want to be Christ-like, and he was poor. no. No, no, no. He became poor as a covenant provision that we can stand on the fact that we can become rich. Now, rich is different for uh, people, different people. You can be rich with love and happiness and joy and money, but all of it is better if there's money in there. Okay? Probably nobody in here has too much money. Some of you have too much month and not enough money. Okay, that needs to change. And, and so great tran the first great transference of wealth happened through three complete strangers. Three complete strangers. Jesus didn't know them. Mary and Joseph didn't know them. We call them the three wise men. They came from three different countries and poured out tons of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. One represents provision. One represents healing, one represents authority. 
Okay, so he was gifted the great transference of wealth that's in the Bible that's getting ready to come is already in the Bible, has already happened from three strangers. Let me re- remind you what I just said. Strangers. Money can come and blessings can come from people that you know, but it sure is exciting when somebody doesn't have any idea who you are and they just bless you with, with some money. God told me to, to give this to you. Thanks. <laughs> thank you, but thank you. Okay? And so this is our covenant right to be rich. And I know this kind of messes with some of, some of y'all's thinking, but that's good. That's what I'm here to do. I'm stirring you up to think, and I want you to look in your own word and verify what I'm teaching here. Because, it's, you know, it, it can be. It's, I'm, not, I'm not preaching anything that's not based on the word. And so here we have a situation where he became poor so we could be rich. And so, once again, this is our covenant right. And so, now in regards to being poor, I've been poor in my life, and I've been po. Po, you can't afford the other O. Okay? That's living out of garbage cans when I was younger. You know, my mom would go and throw my brother in, but always get him out. And, uh, but he would throw out all the disgusting peaches and mom would go home and carve us out a bowl of peaches. So I understand what ultimate poverty is. I understand all of that. And, uh, and so in the process of, of, of that, you know, I learned a lot. You know, I have grounds to write a book called Supernatural Provision. 16 years ago, a little over 16 years ago, I was faced with divorce after 25 years of marriage. Traveled the world, you know, and we pastored a church together. Long, long story, very, very short. He was living a double life as a homosexual and, and preaching against it in the pulpit. And so God loves homosexuals. He hates the sin of homosexuality. He hates fornication. He hates gossip. It's all in the same scripture. Okay? So, and, and God, God is love. Okay? So you need to understand that, number one. And it's God's job to clean them up, not yours. Just, that was a little preach in there. But the thing is, if you have lack, chances are you have something affecting potentially every bone, every part, every cell, every organ in your body. Migraines, worry, insomnia because of worrying about lack, digestive problems, you don't know where your next paycheck is going to come from. You don't know where your next house payment is going to come from or whatever. You're totally convinced that you're not, you're going to lose your house because you don't have any money to make a house payment. You've got indigestion, high hernia, IBS, uh, diverticulitis, Crohn's disease, heart attacks, strokes, death, even to the point of suicide. Some people think that suicide is the only answer to get out of debt. Uh, let me tell you, that is the worst answer. It's not an answer. It's not an option. Okay? And so this is what lack can do. This is what debt can do. That's why the word says we're to be lenders, not borrowers. Because as we borrow, and I have a mortgage. Everything else is paid for. We have a little bit left on our home. Ministry is 100% out of debt. The building is paid for, 14 acres, supernaturally, all the product, everything is paid for, and everything in our house is paid for, our cars are paid for, okay? So I was broke 16 years ago. God has restored everything to me. He has restored everything to me, not through the ministry, but outside sources, supernaturally, God. Now, I get paid for the ministry. The board sets my my salary, things like that. But you know what? I get more from the outside than I do from the ministry. I give more than half my paycheck away to the ministry anyway, so, you know. But I'm just, I'm blessed. I'm very blessed. Every time I turn around, I'm getting another blessing. But I know what it's like to be poor and have nothing. You got four, four daughters, and three of them are in college. One of them's out of college. You know, they're all in their 30s for another couple of months, and one hits the big four O. Oh. You know, I had to believe God for every penny to feed those children. You know, and adults eat more, and we even had two dogs. I didn't eat that much, but still had to believe God for the dog food. Okay? 
So, and I mean, you know, simple, why didn't you give her the dogs? I mean, I had nobody else to cry with me at night. They'd go in my room, they'd whine while I'd be in the, in the shower. Because yeah, they were the only ones that knew how really heartbroken I was and all of that. Two days after that, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So my life was over. You know, I started planning my funeral. And I said, no, 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 wait a minute. Uh, I have four good reasons to live. Charity, Spice, Melody, and Abigail, my daughters. I said, I choose life. I'm going to live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Long story short, I would, I would get in the shower and just be with the Lord. I said, God, I can live without a breast, but I can't live with a broken heart. And I went after getting my heart healed. I went to counselors, etc. They gave me no hope whatsoever. CPA says, just plan on filing bankruptcy. Quit tithing, quit giving offerings. I'm like, hmm, God tells me to do one thing. You're telling me not. Hmm, I'm going to obey God. <laughs> and God, I didn't file bankruptcy. God's blessed me beyond words. And when I got my heart healed of the worry, the trauma, the stress, the worry, I did say that twice. I may say it a few more times because that's the primary thing I believe that brings it on. And when I got free of all that, I went back to the oncologist to find out what we were going to do. What was our next step? They spent two hours looking for something that was completely gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that in turn, I've written the book Power to Heal and healing the heart, different things like that to tell you how to walk out your healing, to get in what's in here healed. But what God has done is that he has promised healing in every area of our lives, including finances. God's anointed me in the area of healing, body, mind, soul, spirit, and finances. Money is going to come like you've never seen before. Most churches, their tithe within the first two weeks, the first actual total for the next year, is usually double. That's pretty amazing. Then there are some things that come to you that money can't buy. The church I was in, not this a couple of days ago, but a week ago, I prophesied, and I'm prophesying over you, that things that were taken, hid from you, are going to be restored. Things that you know of, things that you don't know of, money, relationships, different things along that line, these are going to be restored. Tuesday, I got a, a message on my computer from this evangelist, and uh, he says, I was looking up this pastor in Pennsylvania and on Facebook, and all that came up is pictures with you and him. I'm trying to get to him. Can you help me? Well, I know this evangelist, so I'm, I'm trusting this evangelist. And I'm like, you know, what happened? This, his mother-in-law, my friend, mother-in-law is from Germany. Her father was probably in the Air Force in Germany 70 some odd years ago. Her mother gave her up to adoption and was adopted and brought to America. And she just found out on Monday of this week, this, you know, a week ago, we could go yesterday, who that she had who her mother was and that mom had two boys two sons one of them was the pastor of where I was last weekend so he found a sister they didn't even know he had and his brother is also a pastor and she's a spirit filled Christian and this has been the most amazing story of restoration that you've ever imagined. I'll tell you everything you want to know about our mom. Here's a picture of our mom with me and my brother. It's, it, they've totally, and it, it's proven that that's who that is, totally embraced her, even though she's not been in the family. She was given up 70 years ago, and they're in their early 60s. And they've got a sister, an older sister, that they didn't know about. You never know what God's going to restore. That right there is priceless. But this is what God's going to start doing because of you getting the revelation tonight. The things are turning around. Some of them have gone whoop. Some of your thinking tonight has gone whoop. It's okay to be rich because Jesus was rich. Too many times people associate rich with sin. Jesus was sinless it's, and he's rich and sinless. There you go. Isn't that awesome? But it's, it's money is the root of all evil, right? That's what people think. 
It's the love of money that is the root of all evil. And see, and that's what you need to be careful of. You can have all the things of the world as long as the things of the world don't have you. And when you understand that revelation, when you go to heaven, I don't want God to say to you, I had so much more for you. I wanted you to be a river of finances, but you were just afraid to be rich for fear it might cause you to, to sin. No, you just get to give more. Isn't that fun? Okay, so understand God has a whole lot more for us. Now, if some stranger comes off the street and says, um, God told me to give you something, a little piece of paper, no big deal. You say, okay. So you open it up and it's a check for $1,000 with no name on it because the person didn't know your name. The inclination, two inclinations, number one, what's this for? What do I have to do for it? <laughs> oh, I can't take that and give it back. One person in, the, in one of our services had that happen, but she took it and pro praised God because she didn't have any money to even eat on. And that was a direct answer to prayer to her. And there, her, the name was blank because the lady ran her down the, in the parking lot and she's kind of like walking a little faster because the lady's chasing her. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, don't, you don't really know what's going on here. Somebody's chasing you. I got something for you. Yeah, right. What do you, you know? I mean, you know, nowadays you just really don't know. But, but the word says the blessings of God are running, trying to overtake you. Sometimes we just need to stop and say thanks and keep going. Run to the bank. Glory to God. But see, God is getting ready to bless you. I've been blessed till now. No, I'm talking about the, the roof is going off. This is a minute, hallelujah. <laughs> Joan Hunter Ministries is anointed in the area of healing, of all five areas. You know, the, the logo, slogan, so to speak, of the ministry is miracles happen. Miracles happen. Body, mind, soul, spirit, finances. Some of you that are, are self-employed will have a job on your phone before you even leave tonight. Well, how can you say that? Number one, God prompted me to. Number two, it pretty much happens in every service. So it's not a real strong word of knowledge. It's just what happens. You, know, you get home and there's messages. There's checks in the mail. Well, I already checked my mail. Check it again. Yeah. <laughs> Mailmen come once a day, but, you know, financial angels come several times. Okay, to prove a point. They even deliver on Sunday. Yeah, special delivery. That's for any time a check comes in, special delivery. Glory to God. So I, what I want to do is I'm going to pray, and I'm going to pray for breakthrough in the area of finances. We're going to curse the spirit of poverty. Break that in Jesus' name. Poverty mindset. It's holy to be poor. No, it stinks. Jesus didn't even like being poor. Like, where are we going to sleep? Where are we going to do this? I don't know where to lay my head. He didn't complain. He just didn't know, but God provided Okay, so understand houses are going to come, cars are going to come. Somebody comes up and gives you car keys. You know what you say? Thank you. <laughs> Somebody comes up to me with a set of car keys. I'm going to say thank you, and we'll figure out some way to get it home. No problem, because we're, in, we're in looking right now for a car. We, we, have, we have to get a car. And, uh, and so understand this is your turnaround time. This is the, the time and the hour of the fretting to go and the worry over finances, the worry over lack to go. Today is your day of freedom in every area of your life. Just think about it if you didn't have to worry about finances anymore. Oh, that's like really nice. Okay, and understand I, I talk from somebody who has been there and done that and gotten the freedom to be able to give more to God. Yeah. It's not about giving to get. It's you give so you can give again. You understand the thinking here? Yeah. Okay, so let's pray. Father, right now, I thank you. I thank you that you are the healer 
of our finances too. You are the healer of our hearts. You're the healer of our bodies, of our soul, and our spirit, and our finances. Father, right now, I thank you that this is a time and a season for turnaround, for an outpouring of blessings. It's been prophesied, not by me, but I'm in agreement with it, that July was going to be the biggest outpouring of finances and financial breakthrough that the church has ever seen. So I'm coming into agreement with that. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we curse and cut off the spirit of poverty, poverty mindset. I speak in kingdom thinking in its place. In Jesus' name, Holy Ghost kingdom thinking about what you could do with the millions for the kingdom of God. Father, I ask you to speak to them what you would have them to give. And as we give and give it into your hands, Father, I thank you for multiplying it in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for releasing your financial angels to go and to gather up funds literally, supernaturally. Money showing up in wallets, We've had so much over the last two weeks showing up in wallets. It's just, it's just been amazing. Amazing. And if you're praying about what to give and thinking you don't have any, he gives seed to the sower. You'll probably have something in your pocket, your wallet, somewhere to give. So, Father, I ask you to speak to them what you would have them to give. And I thank you, Father, for multiplying it way beyond money a lost sister a lost brother lost inheritance things that were stolen father i thank you i thank you in jesus name amen uh on your way out if you'd like a bookmark it says miracles happen some of you need to rem remember this this is a really good marker for um, put in your checkbook. Yeah, yeah, keep the blue sheet cause until you get prayed for. Unless you've already had prayer and you're done, uh, got everything healed in Jesus' name. Um, now, in regards to the books, I had number 16, 17, and 18 come out this year. This is number 16. Uh, within two weeks, it was number one on Amazon. I'm impressed by that. I don't know, if, you, you, if it was yours, you would be impressed too. And uh, this is called Prayers and Promises for Healing. And there's prayers in here for all these different situations, diseases. This is a great gift book. And, uh, and like I said, it's doing very, very well, uh, not only on Amazon, but other places. And, uh, oh, I don't know, 50, 55 years ago, 56 years ago, when I was in school, uh, in elementary school, they said I was the dumbest student that they ever had in the history of this very old school, that I was dumb, stupid, ignorant, and retarded, and I would never be able to read or write, okay? So this is, there's some on the far side over there. There is some, you know, and, and some of you have been told you can't, you know, you can't do anything. You know, you never finish anything. You need to find out why, why you, even now you can't. And I'll be doing some teaching on that in the morning and uh, but praise God, I'm not stupid. I'm not retarded. I'm a kinetic learner. If you're familiar with what that is, I learn differently. So and I work in those parameters, and and I know why, because I had something really traumatic happen to me when I was uh, in you, mom. This is my brand new book, uh, latest book actually, and it's called You Can Prophesy, and it makes it very very simple to prophesy and very elementary it starts off with hearing god's voice okay this one right here as i mentioned to you uh in regards to power to heal getting rid of the root causes and uh, there's several more envelopes down here whenever before you go out jacob and uh, this is called healing starts now uh, this is a manual that goes through a whole variety 
of healings and training and teaching uh, in regards to a lot of different things. For example, when I got divorced, they told me to renounce the soul ties. So I said, in the name of Jesus, I renounce the soul ties. I know what a soul tie is. I know the power of a soul tie. But I, when I got married, I did not go into a soul tie relationship. I went into covenant. That meant that I was still in covenant with him and every male he was sleeping with. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, no. So I said, in the name of Jesus, I renounce that covenant I made with George. I call him generic George. I renounce that covenant I made with George. Anything bad that came in through this relationship and through this covenant, take it from me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Right down here on the front. Okay, whoops. He'll come back to you. Hallelujah. And uh, this teaches you how to renounce covenants uh, of anybody being by molestation, uh, rape, different things along that line, uh, even to previous, any form of previous relationships, uh, et cetera, including with pornography. Because some people, um, what's the name on there? Okay. And because uh, uh, anyway, um, people quit pornography because they know it's wrong. They get sucked back in and they get sucked back in because of the covenant. And this teaches you, the other book teaches you how to get rid of the covenant with pornography. It's not a male sin. It's a people sin. Okay? And then it teaches you how to pray for God to remove the images. It's, it's really cool. It's setting people free. Now, this one is called Healing the Whole Man Handbook. This right here is filled with hundreds of diseases, very simply termed how to pray for him too. I have this in multiple languages, about eight different languages. Guy in Germany last year, he says, I got this book a year and a half previous. Everybody I pray for when I use this book gets healed. The anointing is on the book. 45 years of information, practice, doing is in the book. Amen. I'm going to take a drink. And Jacob, come on up here if you would. This is one of his favorite things to get to do. And we're going to give these away. And this is Jacob. Say hi, Jacob. Hey, Jacob. Say, I love, you, Jacob. I love you, Jacob. Good. Just say that after he's done, too. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm going to pat, I'm going to talk about him, hand him to Jacob. When Jacob gets it in his hand, whoever yells, Jacob, the loudest and the fastest gets it free. <laughs> and you get one per trip to, Char to Charlotte. I will be in Smithfield, Raleigh, New Bern, and I know those are distances away, but I will be a lot in North Carolina. I don't know what God is doing this summer in North Carolina, but I know I'm doing a lot. So just get ready. Uh, this is called Hearing the Voice of God and Responding. <laughs> this one is called It's Time. No, no, no. I have it. I have it. Like, you don't even know what it's time is about. It's time that we quit hitting the snooze button and get up and do what God's called us to do. I still have it. I still have it. I, I, get, another, I get another minute. Okay? One moment in time, one situation can change everything. Like, where she's concerned... One moment in time, she got her life back. She gets to sleep tonight. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? It's time. Yes. This one is called Angels on the Move. It's my story and my daughter's story of our angelic visitations backpack example. Me, I'm doing a teaching on angels, and then at the end, I pray for angelic visitations. So don't listen to this in the car. <laughs> Many of you in here have been called to write a book. You may say, who's going to read it? Okay? I said that for many years. Uh, Whitaker House, Bob Whitaker Sr., he says, if you ever put your testimony in a book, I want it. I'm like, who's going to read it? Well, it's called Healing the Heart. It sold over 500,000 copies, not including e-readers, not including other languages. And then in addition to that, it's, um, they say that the average book is read by 12 people. That's 6 million people. Not that, I mean, you know, 5.5 million didn't buy the book. 
Okay, but the point is, is that six, six million people have read the book and their lives potentially have been changed because I was willing to share the hell that I went through. And some of you have books on the inside of you wondering who's going to read it. If one person reads it and their life is changed forever, it's worth it. And this is called Release the Writer Within You. I'm still Joan. <laughs> yeah. My, you're in a lively group. There's gonna, we're going to give at least five away tomorrow. So, and I encourage you to come back. And, well, i got to work. Call in and say, I just feel too good to go to work. <laughs> you know? I mean, you, gotta, you call in and get sick if you never get sick. You never get the benefit of your sick days, which is better. And um, so anyway, right here, my daughter, my oldest daughter, Charity, has written three books as a result of the teaching here. Now she helps people put their books together. My daughter, Melody, came out with her first one uh, in May, and she works for me and, and sometimes travels with me. And, but this book, there's over 200, and I met a few more over the weekend, so it's probably two, 225 first-time authors, not charity having three, counting as three. Charity counts as one, okay, that as a result of this that was taught two years ago. <laughs> we do have more. If we run out, we will ship them to you free of charge. This one I just recorded. It will be very exciting. It will be released uh, on Thursday afternoon on Sid Roth Live. And it's called Hidden Treasures of Healing. And I've got a lot of teachings on healing. But I just went and picked out some of the highlights in the area of healing and some things that I've never recorded before on healing. And, uh, and Jacob designed the cover. Yeah. He's more talented th than running and going and handing these CDs out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and close. And um, Heidi's going to come up here, and, and she has been, she and Joe both have been ordained to this ministry, which means they've been trained and equipped, uh, not only in them getting healed, but they've been trained and equipped to pray for the sick with dealing with the trauma, with dealing with the stress, uh, erasing the memories of the past. I have teaching on all of that out there. Uh, closed door of stress and trauma, I didn't pick that one up. Amazing teaching, you know. Another one back there called Renewing Relationships. It's nicknamed How to Fix Your Husband. It's worth every penny. <laughs> Don't feel bad, guys. It's How to Fix Your Wife, too. And together, How to Fix Your Children. But doing it biblically, not through witchcraft. Okay, you'll never make your husband get saved. Okay, you'll make him go the other direction. Ever tried to preach to your children that are adults? <laughs> Whoa, not good. Not good. It gets explosive. And it makes them run the opposite direction. Okay, when you understand, you get the revelation that you give them to God. And I tell you step by step what to do. Give them to God. Let God take care of them. And your job when your children become adults, your job is to love them, not preach to them. You know, when I see my children or my grandchildren, they don't run to me and say, Joan Hunter's home. No, it's mom. It's grandma. Okay? My children need mom. My sons-in-laws, my sons, need their mom too because none of them have a mom. All their moms are alive, but they have no relationship with their mothers by mother's choice. It's really sad, but I make up for both of them. Yes. And I'm the only real active grandparent in all of, all of my children, my grandchildren's life. There's, there's one that's partially, that's involved some with four of them, but that's pretty much it. You know, so I have to make up the difference, but I can. You know, and if you're dealing with something and your son-in-law doesn't love you, he didn't like me. I don't, I don't know what there wasn't, was anything to not like about me, but, you know, he flat didn't like me. I represented God to him. I represented the church to him. And uh, his mother was hurt really bad 
by the time he was born. Doesn't even know what it is that, that they did to, to the mom. Mainline denomination. I don't have any, I, I don't know even know what it is. But she said, we'll never darken the door of another church. And I represented all of that to her and to, actually more to him. But I would get around him and it would be fangs and I hate you because you represent God. Well, I come with the package. With my daughter, I come with the package. Okay, and she's made sure of that. No matter, he was trying to be narcissistic and get me out of there, her life. It didn't work. But he got delivered of narcissism, which was great. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, glory to God. He was just in the beginning stages of it. And I recognized it, and I told her, and she told him that I said that. He went to a counselor and got free. Praise God. Okay? And I would, I would attempt to hug him. And under my breath where God could only hear me, you were so going to fall in love with me. <laughs> he calls me mom. He named his son after me. He loves me. Not through preaching, but by being Jesus to him and loving him unconditionally. Not even if, if he's telling me to get out of the house and my daughter's saying, no, you're not. I'm like, I'm back. I'm out of here. I don't want to cause this. You know, take me to a hotel. Get me out of here. Yeah, it was, it's been pretty exciting, <laughs> to say the least. But he loves me. He's counting the days until I go back there in September. That's awesome. You know, I stayed with my other daughter when I was out there the last time, and they felt cheated. So, hmm, that's pretty awesome when the children are fighting over which one you're going to stay with. That's a miracle, folks, <laughs> especially when they're married and everything. But see, that's the kind of teaching I have. I have very everyday practical living, how to fix situations like that. You know, and, and, and not be stressed out about it. You know, I did a test uh, in March that tested me magnetically and, and health-wise and so forth and so on. And it was pretty amazing. It, it actually, there's another part of it that tests your emotions. And, uh, and he says, I can't believe how healthy you are. I'm like, I can. <laughs> you know, traveling, I'm 63. I just turned 63 last month. And yeah, that's pretty, yeah, wow. That's, that's that OLD word. And, um, you know, I can't believe I'm that old, but, you know, that's, that's just the way it is. And uh, my grandson t hit five feet this week. <laughs> I'm okay because he still talks like this. When he comes to me, hi, Grandma, I'm, I'm going to lose it. I, I already know I'm going to lose it at that point because he's just, he's just growing up. He's an amazing young, young boy, and he turned 11. But, you know, the, the, the testing, it, it shows you the trauma that you've had in your life, the effect that trauma has had on your life, the effect that stress has had on your life. And as I refer to the battle scars and the battle, you know, whatever those are, and, uh, you know, the stripes, that I got them, but I got them because I survived. But I not only survived, I'm thriving. I'm not crippled because of it, I'm stronger because of it. And, you know, and all, where, where all that's concerned, he says, I've, I've never in all of my years, you have nothing below the line. Nothing about your past shows up. I said, because it's gone. I mean, I've been through hell. I mean, I've been through hell. I just don't look like it. But it shows that all the trauma, all the stress of my entire life is not there. Has no effect on my body. And I told him, it's because I practice what I preach. He says, I need your tapes. So he's, he's got the full healing school, you know, the whole bit. He says, as a doctor, I need to learn more about what you know, and I want you to know more about what I know. And so then he says, this is above the line. This is what you're currently going through. And he says, you have stress, but you have no, you know, because I'm, I mean, you know, you have 18 employees, most of them women. Yeah. Worldwide ministry, you know, you got to believe God for every paycheck and everything for everybody, you know, and, uh, and it's just so neat how God is, we've never been late, everybody's been paid, it's been quite miraculous. Sometimes you just got to pray a little harder, <laughs> or maybe a little, you think in your mind, a little harder and a little louder. And he says, I know you're, you have stress, 
but you have no stress stored in your body. He says, I don't know how you can do that. No business owner can do that. And a ministry is a business. It needs to be run like a business. Or you run into problems with the IRS and a few other people. And uh, he says, I've, and he says, look at this. Whoop, one point beyond the maximum. It was my joy level. And joy doesn't mean I'm, ha, <laughs> It's down deep. It's the joy that passes, you know, all understanding. Joy unspeakable. It's a good song. Amen. I'm going to pray a prayer. And any of you that need healing, you know, if you can come tomorrow, then that will be great because I had an appointment at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon and it got canceled. So I'm here until dinner tomorrow night available, though we will eat something somewhere along the way. And, um, you know, I'm not going to be here necessarily that long, but I want to encourage you that we're going to be here to pray as long as we need to tomorrow. Tonight, some of you need to go to work, t you know, tomorrow. And, you know, so those of you, you know, definitely get prayer tonight because we want you healed and whole. And I encourage you, not because I get any money from what's on the book table, but I know that what's on the book table can save your life. It can save your family. And it's time that we invest in ourselves to get ourselves healed and whole. And then watch how God will use you when you get that. Many people say, I want your mantle. I want your anointing. It's on the table. Freely, I freely give all of that. You know, yes, you have to buy the books and CDs and so forth, but I freely give my time to record all of them. And so this is not for me to, oh, look how many I have on the table. I got more than half of my really good ones at home. Okay? But I bring what I can on the road because I want you to be blessed. I want you to be fed. I want you never, ever to get sick again. And you can live in divine health. That's the word. That's our covenant promise with God. Okay? So, Father, I thank you. I thank you for an amazing night of so many healings, so many miracles, and we've just begun. Father, I just thank you, and I'm seeing, um, I'm seeing stars falling like confetti that's just literally been opened up, um, just like it's been popped, but it's stars falling out, and, and it, they're, you know, twinkle, 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 little, you know, glitter kind of stars, but they're specifically stars. And, and I see them just being dispersed by the thousands on you. And they're just blessings. He's pouring out blessings that you can't even comprehend. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. And I hope to see you in the morning at the 10 o'clock service. Come here. Uh, you know, if you want to get here, we'll be here a little after 9 in the morning and 9.15. Uh, and we'll be available to pray even at that time in the morning. Okay? God bless you. And uh, I hope to see all of you tomorrow and maybe even again. God bless you.